This is similar to the problem before, except instead of a P1 downwards, you have an M1. So to understand this, just think of arbitrarily, if you're holding a beam with connections, something's tending to twist this, okay? And it's at a given distance A from, from point A, um, so we got to go through the same process. Uh, you find the reactionary forces, the pin gives you possibilities in the horizontal and vertical direction. The roller gives you possibilities only in the vertical direction, so we have three possible forces. Um, and let's just start writing our equations. Fx um, equals zero, again, R2, big deal. Um, we have Fy equals zero. We only have two forces here in the vertical direction because where we had P1 last time, we don't anymore. We don't calculate this as a force as we do these. Only have R1 and R3 both in the positive direction. Instantly, you should be going, whoa, there's something weird here. Two positive values equal zero. So to resolve this, you have to accept at this point that, okay, something's different from the, from the last problem. One of these is negative at this point. And we can already start intuitively imagining why. Because if we're pushing this, one is pulling it back down, one is pulling it up, and really we just have to, to figure out which one is and the value is. So now we look at our last equation. Uh, let's do around point B again just for our consistency. And what do we have here? At point B, we're not going to care about R3 again. Now, this is always kind of interesting. We, we're saying that we're uh, calculating the moment around this point. But we have this moment at point A from, from, from this side, so it's not on point B. But this moment tends to transfer itself across the beam in the same constant value. So we're going to write M1 in our equation even though it's not a moment about this point. It transfers itself so that this rotation sense here is going to be the same rotation sense here. So M1 is negative in our sense. So we have a negative M1. So again, it's non-intuitive that since we're doing all of these problems with a set rotation point and carrying both the forces around them that cause this point to rotate, we still, uh, however, care about this moment, although it's, uh, it's written as at this point, it's going to transfer its moment to this point. So care not about this point. In fact, A really doesn't care at all. That moment transfers itself here. And you don't write it in relation to any distance because it's already that, about that torque um, units. Uh, we care now about R1, which is the same value as it was before, R1L. And so we can write um, this in terms of R1 because we want to find that out. R1 is M1 over L. And then we plug that back into this equation where M1 plus M1 over L plus R3 equals 0. Well, R3 is just going to be negative M1 over L. And that makes sense. If we're trying to rotate this beam in this sense, you can usually, just for purposes of understanding the problem, visualize what would happen if there weren't connections. Well, this beam would start to look like this, right? And in that case, we're pushing down on this beam, so the ground is going to, on this connection, so the ground is going to push back up. We're pulling up on this side, so this roller is going to try to, you know, pull that beam back down to the ground. So that all makes sense here. I mean, once again, this is zero. And we've solved everything we need for that problem.